on standards for inverses. So this section we're going to focus on now is on inverse functions. And example one says determine which function or functions have an inverse function from the tables below. Provide a reason if an inverse function does not exist. So what we need to determine is does each x value they gave us have a unique y? Because that's what we look at with tables of values. So for this first one, g of x, if we say negative 2 goes with 9, it can't go with another number in the list, or that would not be okay. But that's the original function. And they are asking us about the inverse function. So first things first, we need to switch the x and the y. So the inverse for g of x is if we take them and we switch them. And so the, the values for g of x are going to actually, let's see, that is their x. They've switched the way they write them. But we're going to switch these two around. So we're going to put 9, negative 2, 3, negative 1, 1, 0, 3, 1, 9, 2, and 19, 3. All right, so now thinking of the same idea. So that original one, I was just showing you that each x has to have only one value for y. And the problem here is 9 is paired up with negative 2, and 9 is also paired with, ne with positive 2. 3 is with negative 1, and then it's also with positive 1. So this one is definitely not a function. So first we found the inverse but it does not have an inverse that is a function. Not an inverse function. So it has an inverse, but it's not a function. And it's because each x does not have a unique y, like I wrote up there at the top. That is the reason. So for the next one, let's switch x and y. So the inverse of h of x is to just make a new table and switch these values. So for negative 12, it goes with negative 2. Negative 9 goes with negative 1. Negative 6 goes with 0. Negative 3, 1, 0, 2, and then 3, 3. So for this function, we don't have any values of x that repeat, so it shouldn't be a problem to show that it is a function. So the inverse of h of x says negative 12 goes with negative 2, and there's nowhere else that we see that negative 12 goes with a different number. Negative 9 goes with negative 1, and again, we don't see anywhere in the list that that would be another number that it would be paired with. And then it keeps going down the list. So each one of these values does have a unique y. So that means this one would be a function. So let's just say yes. And move on to the third one. All right, so the inverse of j of x would be to switch x and y. So if you have 4, negative 2, 2, negative 1, 1, 0, 0 0.5, 1, 0 0.25, 2, and 0 0.125, 3, Again, we don't have x's that are repetitive. Like 4 goes with negative 2, and we can't tell anywhere in that list that it would not go with negative 2 uniquely. And then 2 goes with negative 1. There's not another negative 2 on our list down here. They're all different. And so in this case, all we can tell is that, yes, that would still be a function. And let's look at the last one. So the inverse for k of x would be to switch the x's and the y's. So we have 5, negative 2, 3, negative 1, 1, 0, negative 1, 1, 1, 2, and 3, 3. So for this one, we can tell that 1 is paired up with 0, and then 1 is also paired up with 2. So we would say, no, this is not an inverse function. It's an inverse, but it is not a function because each x does not have a unique y. So each x does not have 
a unique Y. All right, so that's it for example one.